Welcome back to another review. I've got the LC10 charger in today and this came in from Nightcore for a test and a review. So we'll go through a few areas first off just to show you the physical appearance on the box. This gives you some of the specs and information. No user guide with this, just the QR code to scan. You can download the manual. I will include the manual later on and some of the features with this include a built-in light. You also have magnetic charging and a battery level indicator. So we have one amp charging on this and we also have the built-in connectors, micro USB, and this is the cells it will take. So any 3.6 or 3.7 volt lithium batteries and a quick look at the unit, 24 centimeters in length. So it's a bit smaller than the Olight magnetic charger in terms of overall length. Out of the box, you have the lightning connector pre-attached to the micro USB tip, so you can take that off. I know that you can lose that, but they've included it anyway. And there's your micro USB, which plugs into the back, which gives you your full USB when you're charging a battery. Only point to make here is no Type-C connector. You can get adapters for that, but perhaps would have been nice if they included one. When you're ready to charge, pull it out, and then you can plug into a device or attach the adapter. So plastic on this, but it does feel quite well made, as in it's uh, not just that rigid, easy to break plastic. It has a bit of strength and flexibility, and the cable also feels decent as well. So I don't have any complaints on the build. Underside of the unit, we have touch sensitive control, and this will give you, um, you'll be able to change the lighting modes on that, or even turn it off if you don't want it. So the case is decent on this. Um, there's really nothing to complain about. Although perhaps later on, as I'll explain, there are a couple of things I might change. Gold-plated contacts, and the magnets are about the same strength as the Olight magnetic charger. So in other words, you shouldn't have any problems, at least with flat top cells, and around about 16 centimeters between the two contacts, fully extended. So that means with larger batteries, 21700, even the protected cells, which most chargers won't fit, this won't have any problems at all. You can see here, shaking it around, no problem at all with the flat top cells. Now when you connect it to a battery, one to three LEDs come up, the red LEDs. Anything I would have changed with that would be maybe drop the one LED to about 25, 30%. So once you've connected it, you'll be able to get an idea of the battery level and you couldn't do that on the Olight magnetic charger. It was, uh, didn't give you any feedback at all. So that is a useful feature. I would have liked the flashing voltage indicator, but still it gives you an idea of the charge level of the battery. Now just to change the lighting levels, tap on the back button, the power button. It's touch sensitive and it works quite well unless you've got wet hands or something like that. So you can cycle between the three power outputs. It's not massively bright, it's more of an emergency light. Not really a must have feature for me, but I suppose it makes sense to include it. Now just connecting into a power bank to show you. If you put that in the wrong way around, nothing bad will happen. It's just the compact type of a USB port that you can see on some uh, memory sticks as well when you plug them into a computer. Just saves space, makes it smaller. Plug directly into the device and you're charging. So once you've a battery attached, you can use it as a power bank and it also gives you a power level one to three LEDs so you can see the approximate charge state of it. This is charging at about an amp just over. So that's the speed I was getting from a fully charged cell, which is about what I would expect. Well, the amperage does jump around a little bit for about 20 seconds after you have connected the battery and you're charging it and then it stabilizes and gets to around about the one amp for charging. So you've one amp charging and one amp discharging with the power bank in basic terms. That's perfectly acceptable for a device of this type. One amp charging is quite fast for a battery. It's not super fast for a device, but this is designed as a sort of emergency backup and the, you know, that's about what you're going to get out of a uh, normal power bank, unless it's a larger one. So there's no problems when you reverse the contacts. I mean, you can connect them any way. You don't have to align the positive to a negative, And obviously there's no problems if you connect them together. Now, if I connect an AA nickel metal hydride cell, nothing happens. So we don't have uh, low voltage activation, but if I put two together, it does put a lower current in to the battery. So that means to say that if the voltage is a bit lower, it's about 2.7 with these, it will attempt to put some life into a lithium cell. You can use three 
Nicomet hydride cells together, but this isn't a charging solution for me. It's only really if you um, have three AAs around, you can use it as a power bank. You can't really get a good charge with three of them together, and it's not very practical because they can fall uh, fall apart. It's just the magnetic area which is sort of holding them together a bit. Small lithium cells are charging at one amp, and I think that's too high myself. Normally, you'd be charging at half an amp. The only way to detect that would be internal resistance so what I probably would have done myself apart from taking the smaller lithium cells off of the box and just saying not really suitable for charging small lithium ion batteries because it's not really you'll wear them out I would have put a switch on the case so you can switch from one amp to half an amp charging so if you are using smaller lithium batteries and a lot of people don't uh, Nightcross said they're not that common but still I think it's a valid point go for the F1 or F2 because that can detect them. It has a contact on the slider, so it knows if it has a smaller battery. Uh, compared to the Olight magnetic charger, this does have a few advantages that the battery indicator has already mentioned. You can't use the Olight as a power bank. Olight went for a slightly lower charge rate, around 700 to 730 milliamps, which isn't as dramatically high for smaller lithium ion batteries. It's still a bit high for my own taste, but um, it would be better, that's a better charge rate for smaller cells, it's, it's usable. Now for nickel metal hydride it charges around about 250 which isn't that fast but I do wish Nightcore had included that on this particular charger as well as the F1 and F2 because it is a useful feature to have. Saying that the 1 amp charging is fine for 2 6 650s, 18 650 cells. You will notice a speed improvement compared to the Olight and when it's finished charging it goes static on the LEDs. They switch off after a few minutes. Termination is fine, 4.17 volts. Every cell I put through came off at that and I put through quite a few batteries so there's no complaints on the charging. Just wish that you could charge smaller batteries with this. Very little drain from the LED. It's not a lot of power out of this. Um, I personally don't see it as a big feature myself, it wouldn't bother me if they didn't include it, but if I compare it to the LA30, you can see that it's pretty much about half the power output, so maybe about three or four lumens. In layman's terms, in pitch black you'll be able to see where you're walking with this if you need to use it in an emergency. Quick look at the user guide, just in case you want to have a look through that. I should have covered everything. It's a very simple product to use. Price on this is about $20, so it's a touch more than the F2. And I personally do prefer the Nightcore F2, but this does have a, a super compact size and does have that little LED light included, so that might swing it for you. Now, I've listed out my pros and cons. Basically, it's down to can't charge nickel metal hydride, the Type-C adapter, and I would like to have control over the charging. Just with a switch, drop it down to half an amp, for smaller cells and maybe they could have added the voltage flashing feature that would be nice but it does a decent job on charging the power bank function is useful and the charging speed of one amp is fine for larger lithium ion cells so it could be quite a useful product i just would have changed a few things to have made it the ultimate portable charger thanks for watching the video let me know what you think in the comment section and i'll see you soon